This is going to be a very, very exciting video. Why? Well, that's because over the past few months, there have been two devices that I've been using a ton. Obviously, these two. So the iPad Pro with the brand new Magic Keyboard, which has actually now become my home computer and the full laptop replacement for when I'm on the go. And then also, I've been using the brand new 13-inch 2020 MacBook Pro, which has now replaced my 15-inch MacBook Pro 2019. The full end of review of the 13-inch 2020 MacBook Pro is coming out the following week. By the way, this is the 10th generation model with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Uh, but until then, here's the answer to the question that a lot of you have been asking. Should you buy an iPad Pro with a new Magic Keyboard, which is finally a true laptop replacement now, or should you get something like a MacBook Pro 13-inch? Well, get all of those snacks ready and buckle up because this is going to be a very detailed comparison, answering pretty much all of your questions and covering everything from the design, the display, the keyboard, the trackpad, the camera, microphone, speakers, performance, battery life, and finally, the value. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you have an iPad Pro, or any iPad whatsoever that supports the Apple Pencil, you have to check out Paperlike, our sponsor, for this video. Paperlike is essentially a thin screen protector that you apply to the iPad. That simply makes the iPad's display feel more like real paper, as opposed to that slippery glass feel that you normally get when using the Apple Pencil. So, if you're an artist or anyone that uses an Apple Pencil, Paperlike is a must-have. It's pretty much a game-changer. Oh, and whenever you buy one Paperlike, you actually get two of them. And on top of this, you also get 100% money back guarantee in case you are not satisfied. Simply use the link below to check it out and thanks again to Paperlike for being a sponsor of this video. Starting off with the design, these two devices couldn't be any more different. You see, the MacBook Pro was born to be a laptop, while the iPad Pro was born to be a tablet which then matured into a laptop. In terms of which one looks better, in the end, this is very, very subjective. Because if you're looking for a more traditional laptop, then the MacBook Pro is definitely the winner here, as you get a full aluminum and glass unit body build, which is extremely sturdy and premium. But if you're looking for something that's a bit more versatile, uh, then the iPad Pro is indeed the winner here. With that floating design, the iPad Pro definitely looks more futuristic. But with the Magic Keyboard itself, it doesn't feel as premium as the MacBook Pro does. I'm not referring to the actual keys, but the material surrounding the keys. So on the iPad Pro, we have the silicone slash rubber membrane uh, on the Magic Keyboard itself, which while it does indeed protect the iPad, uh, you don't really get that ultra premium feel that the MacBook Pro gives you. And this material gets smudged extremely easy, and even after just a few hours of use, it ends up looking disgusting. So the iPad Pro will look very used in a matter of hours, while the MacBook Pro will keep on looking fresh and brand new for years, as it has a full metal body. So overall, the MacBook Pro does look and feel a bit more, quite a bit more premium, to be honest, than the iPad Pro with a keyboard. But which one is actually more usable? Well, the iPad Pro has a significant advantage here. You see, not only does the iPad Pro support touch input, which the MacBook Pro does not, but you can also easily remove it from the keyboard case and use it just like a tablet in landscape or even in portrait mode whenever you wish. You can use the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil as well. You can use it as an external monitor for that MacBook Pro of yours, uh, none of which you can do with a Mac, by the way. Then you have Face ID on the iPad Pro versus Touch ID on the MacBook Pro, and I have to say Touch ID is significantly inferior to Face ID, because with Face ID, the moment you tap uh, the screen or even a key on the keyboard, the iPad instantly unlocks. Same goes for when you're filling in passwords, or when using Apple Pay, the iPad Pro is a massive improvement over a MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro is just a traditional laptop, whereas the iPad Pro is this brand new modular device that you can use in any shape or form that you want. Definitely a magical device. And even when it comes to portability, the iPad Pro comes in two sizes, 11 inch and 12.9 inch. The MacBook Pro comes in 13 inch and 16 inch. So if we compare both 13-inch sizes of both of these devices, uh, the iPad Pro on its own weighs 641 grams, while the MacBook Pro 13-inch weighs 1.4 kilograms. However, if we add in the Magic Keyboard to the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, it ends up being 1.35 kilograms, almost as heavy as the MacBook Pro is. The 11-inch iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard weighs 1.7 kilograms, so that one is much lighter. However, both iPad Pros are actually slightly thicker 
than the 13-inch MacBook Pro is. So just because of how much more versatile and flexible to use the iPad is, I have to give the design award to the iPad Pro. Okay, so what about the displays? Well, both the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro have an outstanding display panel. They're both LCD panels. Uh, they're also IPS panels, meaning that they have an almost 180 degree viewing angle. They both have a DCI-P3 panel, which can display around 25% more colors when compared to a standard sRGB display. So both of these displays are very, very good for photo and video editing because they're extremely accurate. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day, they're incredible displays, both of them. Really, the best LCD displays that you can find on a laptop or on a tablet. But you see, the iPad Pro's display is actually superior to the MacBook Pro's in three ways. First, the bezels are much thinner on the iPad Pro, meaning that the iPad Pro's display not only looks better and more futuristic, uh, but if you get the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, that one would be significantly smaller than the MacBook Pro 13 inches uh, form factor, even though the display is almost the same size. Then second, the iPad Pro's display is actually quite a bit brighter, with a peak brightness of 600 nits when compared to 500 nits on the MacBook Pro. This means that if you're the kind of person that uses uh, your device a lot outdoors, then the iPad Pro is a much better option. And then finally, number three, the iPad Pro also has a Pro Motion display, which can adjust its refresh rate from 24 hertz to 30 hertz to 60 hertz, all the way up to 120 hertz, depending on the content that you're watching. While the MacBook Pro has a fixed 60 hertz refresh rate. And I gotta say, this is by far the biggest advantage to the iPad Pro. And that's because everything you do on the iPad Pro feels so, so smooth. So the thing is that my MacBook Pro does actually drop a lot of frames when scrolling and navigating through the UI. The animations don't always run at 60 frames per second. This is a 60 hertz display, meaning that it can uh, display a maximum of 60 FPS. So when they drop to 50 or even 40 frames per second in some cases, and then you compare that to the iPad Pro, which pretty much always runs at 120 in the UI, well, the difference is just significant. It's so, so, so gigantic. And because of this, I have to give the display win to the iPad Pro. Okay, next up we have the keyboard and the trackpad. So when it comes to the keyboard, both of these devices now feature Apple's brand new Magic Keyboard. Long gone is that disastrous butterfly keyboard that had almost no key travel and that Apple refused to replace over a period of five years, even though it constantly broke. This Magic Keyboard is actually very similar to the one that we get on the iMac keyboards, which are also called the Magic Keyboard. And they're also very similar to the amazing keyboards that we used to get on all the MacBooks up until 2015. The difference here is that we do get larger keycaps and a more stable keyboard overall. So both of these keyboards are actually quite a bit better than the 2015 MacBook Pro keyboards, and even better than the current Magic Keyboards that we have on the iMacs. Okay, but which one of these is actually better? Well, the MacBook Pro definitely has a better keyboard, which you probably expected as this thing is, you know, an actual laptop. But the thing is, it's not actually that much better. If the MacBook Pro has, let's say, a 10 out of 10 keyboard, then the iPad Pro has probably around an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Um, at least when, when it comes to the 11-inch iPad Pro, which does indeed have a much smaller keyboard overall, uh, which I do find to be quite a bit too crammed, as some of the keys have a much smaller size in order to fit inside a small footprint. The 12.9-inch iPad Pro has a full-size keyboard, just like the MacBook Pro does, and that one's much more comfortable to type on. But aside from the size difference, the typing experience is almost identical between the two sizes of the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro. You get the same one millimeter of key travel, and I actually ended up scripting almost all of my videos off of the iPad Pro until I got this brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro. Just because from the moment I started typing and scripting on this iPad Pro, I just couldn't go back to my 2019 15 inch MacBook Pro, which still comes with that butterfly keyboard. So, yeah, the typing experience on both of these is just excellent. One advantage that a MacBook Pro has over the iPad Pro's keyboard is that we do get a function row of keys. So we have the escape key, as well as the touch bar, which gives you some virtual controls based on the app that you're currently using. The iPad Pro, unfortunately, has none of that. And if you want to adjust the volume or the brightness, you have to go into the control center, which obviously takes significantly longer when compared to having a dedicated key uh, on the MacBook Pro. Now, both keyboards are backlit, but the iPad Pro does not have a key or even a software toggle in the control center to adjust the brightness of it. In order to do that, you have to go all the way into settings 
and adjust it from there, which is quite inconvenient. On the MacBook Pro, you just have a toggle for the backlight built into the touch bar, and it's very quick and convenient to adjust it. Now, interesting enough, I do find the typing experience on the iPad Pro to somewhat be more comfortable than the MacBook Pro, mostly because since it is a much thinner device when open, uh, the chassis doesn't really hurt on your wrists as much as they hurt on the MacBook Pro. We also have a soft rubber material chassis versus a full metal chassis on the MacBook Pro. So yeah, the iPad Pro's keyboard, it's, I don't know, just softer and easier on the wrists. The tilt is greater than on the MacBook Pro, so you can lean the display further down when compared to the iPad Pro. And the MacBook Pro is also more stable when compared to the iPad, which when tilted all the way backwards, it does have a tendency to tip over. Overall, the MacBook Pro does have a better keyboard. So what about the trackpad now? Well, the MacBook Pro takes this one as well. Not only is the trackpad on the MacBook Pro significantly larger, but it also doesn't physically click. Instead, there's a vibration motor inside of it that vibrates and it gives you the impression that you've actually clicked the trackpad. And honestly, it works so well, like, I can't even tell. If you don't know that this isn't a physical uh, trackpad, you, you wouldn't even be able to tell that it doesn't actually click. So this way, you also have two levels of pressure, with the second one being used for the force click, which gives you more options when pressing on an item. The iPad Pro uses a much smaller trackpad, which does indeed physically click. However, unlike the trackpad on most Windows laptops, you can indeed press the iPad's trackpad anywhere you want, even on the top. So this is not a diving board mechanism, but instead, the entire trackpad actually clicks, it actually goes down, all of it, which is pretty cool. And the trackpad gestures, by the way, are very similar between these devices. However, the iPad does have a few ones that are different, such as taking you to the home screen or displaying the notification center. Overall, the MacBook Pro has a better keyboard as well as a better trackpad. But the iPad Pro still has a better keyboard and a better trackpad than most other laptops on the market. So yeah, the iPad Pro still has an amazing keyboard and trackpad. Um, yeah, MacBook Pro is just a tiny bit better. Okay, now moving on to the camera, the microphones and the speakers, the camera is a massive upgrade on the iPad. Not only do we have a 1080p 60 frames per second front camera compared to the 720p 60 frames per second camera on the MacBook Pro, but the iPad Pro also comes with actual cameras on the back. You know, cameras capable of taking some breathtaking photos, 4K 60 video, and overall images and videos that are pretty much just as good as on the iPhone. So yeah, you can just go camping, take your iPad Pro, take some photos with the iPad Pro, edit those photos on the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, and then upload those photos onto Instagram, since on this one you can actually have 4G, whereas on this one, this is Wi-Fi only. So, not a big difference between the two. Not only that, but we do have an ultra-wide-angle module, as well as a LiDAR scanner for AR apps on the 2020 iPad Pro. Now, in case you're wondering how the microphones sound like, here's a test. Okay, so this is a front-facing camera and a microphone test between the 2018-2020 iPad Pro and the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, in terms of the camera, as you can probably tell, the iPad Pro is way more zoomed in, which I don't personally like. Also, the camera is on its side um, when the iPad Pro is in landscape, whereas the MacBook Pro is just a tiny bit more zoomed out. So I do really like that. But in terms of the quality, I can definitely tell that the MacBook Pro is significantly worse. In terms of the microphones, I don't know. But you can let me know in the comment section down below. When it comes to the speakers, they're both very, very good. The MacBook Pro is better, uh, as you know, this is a larger device, but here's a quick speaker comparison. Okay, moving on to my favorite section always, and that's the performance. And this is going to shock most of you. You see, on paper, the MacBook Pro simply smokes the iPad Pro. It has an Intel 10-generation quad-core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage, at least on my model right here. The iPad Pro, on the other hand, it comes with Apple's brand new A12Z processor, which is, fun fact, the same, mostly, as the A12X from 2018. We have 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Also, the MacBook Pro has two cooling fans and some pretty big air intake and outtake vents, whereas the iPad Pro has no fans at all and no vents at all. So you would expect the MacBook Pro to simply just murder the iPad Pro when it comes to performance. But to my surprise, it was actually the other way around. 
in Geekbench 5, the iPad Pro scored 1,114 single-core points and 4,654 multi-core points, while the MacBook Pro 13-inch, again, this is the one with the i5 10th-generation Intel Core processor, uh, this one scored 1,128 single core, so slightly higher, and 4,370 multi-core, quite a bit lower. Interesting. So, what about the GPU? Well, the iPad Pro 2020 scored 9,547 points, while the MacBook Pro scored 8,374 points, uh, and in the best case scenario, it scored as high as 9,960 points. Yeah, long story short, between multiple tests, it seems like both of these are actually identical in terms of raw performance. In fact, the iPad Pro even appears to be slightly more powerful in some cases. And if you compare the iPad Pro baseline to the baseline 13-inch MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro is significantly more powerful both CPU and GPU-wide. This is the higher end for Thunderbolt 3-port model. But come on, Daniel, stop using Geekbench, stop doing benchmarks, that's not realistic. Okay, let's do some real-world tests. So here I have the exact same 4K video timeline uh, with the exact same shots taken from our Panasonic GH5. The shots are in 4K60 and they're pretty demanding for both of these machines. I've added some transitions and titles and this 5 minute 4K60 timeline took 2 minutes and 53 seconds to export on the iPad Pro and 7 minutes and 27 seconds to export on the MacBook Pro. Holy smokes, that's a significant difference. Like the iPad Pro was more than 2.5 times faster than the MacBook Pro. And obviously if you have longer and more complex projects, the iPad Pro would have an even bigger advantage. Now, if you're into gaming and you're wondering which of these machines is better, the iPad Pro, strangely enough, is significantly better for gaming than the MacBook Pro is. Yes, most of the games on the App Store are mobile games, but you get millions of those and they're extremely well optimized for the iPad Pro. On the MacBook Pro, there are barely any games available. And this is because Apple now prefers games to run on Metal instead of OpenGL uh, from macOS Catalina. And 32-bit games have been dropped as well. Meaning that those very few games that we had on Steam before, even those are barely even supported now. And most games have been dropped. So let's take a look at Fortnite, for example, a game that runs on both platforms. Which machine can actually run it better? So the iPad Pro can run Fortnite in native resolution at 2388 by 1668 at epic settings, and we're just getting about 30 frames per second. Now, that's extremely impressive because this is literally fully maxed out. If we drop the graphics to medium, we're now getting around 76 frames per second, and if we drop all the way to low, we're now getting 120 frames per second. And you know, since the iPad has a 120Hz display, it means that you can actually see all those individual 120 frames each second, and the experience of running the game on the iPad is just unbelievable. Like, everything is so fluid and smooth. Yeah, so awesome. And take a look at this, even on the low settings, I still have the 3D resolution scaling set to 100%, so this is still running in native resolution. So what about the MacBook Pro? Well, I'm also running the game at native resolution, so 2560 by 1600 in this case, which is slightly higher than on the iPad Pro, but not by a lot. And it seems like even on medium settings, we're only getting around 17 frames per second, so yeah, the game is fully unplayable, and if we drop to low, we're now getting about 25 frames per second compared to the 120 frames per second that the iPad Pro <laughs> was getting. Okay. Okay, so that's extremely impressive for the iPad Pro. Um, a tablet that's miles thinner than the MacBook Pro and also has no cooling fans at all. Like, all the cooling on this thing is done passively. And as you see, we get a significantly better performance for both video editing and gaming on the iPad Pro. But probably the biggest advantage to the iPad Pro is that it can run both mobile as well as recently some desktop apps as well, such as iMovie, GarageBand, Microsoft Office, Photoshop, Lightroom, and a few more, while the MacBook Pro can only run desktop apps. Now, there are a few iOS apps that have been ported to macOS thanks to Apple's Catalyst tool. Uh, so we do have apps such as the Home app, News, Apple TV, and more, but the UI still sucks. They're not that easy to control, and, you know, they were mostly designed for touch input first. The iPad actually does a much better job at running desktop apps such as Photoshop, especially now that we have full keyboard and trackpad support. Okay, so in this case, the iPad Pro is a much better computer, right? And it has fully replaced my MacBook Pro, right? Well, 
not really. You see, there are a few things that the iPad Pro just still cannot do. For example, if you plan on connecting multiple monitors, the iPad Pro is just a mess. The video output doesn't scale properly, and you can only connect one single monitor, and yeah, as you can see from the scaling, it's an absolute mess. With my MacBook Pro, for example, I can have a 5K monitor connected, I can have a 4K monitor connected, and I'm also running this internal 2K display all through a single Thunderbolt 3 cable, which the iPad does not support at all. Also, you can connect things such as an eGPU enclosure to the MacBook Pro and have as many monitors as you want. You can connect four eGPU enclosures and have like four to each. So yeah, this is really good for that. And not only that, but you can also connect uh, something like a Thunderbolt NAS, like we have, and get some insane one to two gigabytes per second transfer speeds for video editing, which is just nuts, whereas the iPad is limited to just using a wireless connection via SMB uh, for significantly lower speeds of just around 10 megabytes per second. Also, if you're a developer and you want to do any app development, well, there is no Xcode on the iPad. Same for video editing. While LumaFusion is actually pretty good, Final Cut Pro 10 on the Mac is just so much better. Plus, you can run a lot more Pro tools on the Mac, such as Logic Pro 10, Ableton, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, and so many more alongside a ton of your plugins. So if you need any of those, then the Mac Pro is still the way to go. Now, remember when I said that I felt that my MacBook Pro 13 inch dropped frames when scrolling through the UI? Well, I actually want to expand on this a bit. So I'm using this tool called Quartz Debug. And as you can see, uh, we actually get a frame rate meter, which is updated live. And I'm getting around 60 frames per second, but it does occasionally go down to even 40 frames per second when scrolling through the UI, which is very, very noticeable. Like it feels so, so, so laggy. The iPad Pro, on the other hand, this thing is running at a smooth 120 frames per second. There's no actual way to actually measure that unless I open up uh, Xcode and then the device viewer and I can do it from there. But I couldn't notice any lag or any slowdown whatsoever. So from what I can tell, it's running at a constant 120 frames per second in the UI. Next up, when it comes to the actual battery life, both of these machines claim up to 10 hours of usage which unfortunately none of these machines can actually achieve. You see, with my usage, my MacBook Pro gets me around five to six hours, while my iPad Pro gets me around six hours or so. Yeah, pretty much the same. Now, what's really cool about the iPad Pro is that you can actually detach the Magic Keyboard um, and you actually get a better battery life that way. So that is indeed doable. And finally, having said all of this, which one is worth it the most? Well, you see, the MacBook Pro starts at $1,300, and for that, you get a 1.4 GHz Intel Core i5 processor, an 8th generation, you get 8 GB of RAM, and 256 GB of storage. Now, my MacBook Pro, like I said before, this is the higher-end model, uh, which starts at $1,800, and this gives you a much more powerful 2 GHz Intel Core i5 10th generation processor. You also get double the RAM, uh, 16 GB, and also 512 GB of storage. The iPad Pro 11 inch starts from $800 for the 11 inch model or $1,000 for the 12.9 inch model. Now you see, if you add in the keyboard, which I'm assuming most of you will, uh, that would bring up the price of the 11 inches model to $1,100 and the 12.9 inches price to $1,350. So the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with a keyboard is actually more expensive than the baseline 13 inch MacBook Pro. And unfortunately, you only get 128 gigabytes of storage compared to 256 on the baseline MacBook Pro. And if you bump up the storage to 256 on the iPads, the 11 inch would cost you $1,200 and the 12.9 inch would cost you $1,450. Whew, that's really, really pricey. So the question then is, is the iPad Pro really worth it over a MacBook Pro, especially considering that it is quite a bit more expensive? Well, for 90% of people, it actually is. Um, if you don't need to do any app development or any high-end video editing, then the iPad Pro is actually a much better device than the MacBook Pro is. You get a much more versatile machine that supports touch input, vertical or landscape orientation. It's great for reading books. It's great for browsing the web. It's actually perfect for photo editing and graphic design thanks to the Apple Pencil. And on top of all this, it will be significantly more fluid than a MacBook Pro is. I strongly believe that the iPad Pro is indeed the future, and it seems like Microsoft was right.
from the very start. Also, I forgot to mention, John Prosser actually said that Xcode is coming to the iPad Pro and Final Cut and Logic Pro 10. So Apple will actually eventually bring those apps from the Mac to the iPad Pro. And the iPad Pro is definitely looking like the future of computing. But let me know what do you guys think. Which one would you pick between these two and why? And if you want to pick any of these, definitely consider using our links below, the affiliate links, because they do help support the channel. They don't cost you anything, but Amazon gives us a small commission from their sales on their end, which again helps support the channel and videos such as this one. And if you don't plan on buying one and you still want to support the channel, definitely consider uh, becoming a member by tapping on that join button below and obviously also subscribing and hitting the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a brand new video comes out. So yeah, this has been pretty much it, a really fun one to shoot, to shoot, losing my accent again. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll be using both, to be honest. So I'm actually using both uh, for real work. When I'm on the office, I need this for monitor connections and emails. Uh, I do have a few plugins that I have to use, which only work on Mac. But when I'm on the go and for everything else, I'll be using the Acro Pro. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Set of tech, sign me up. Cheers.